Parce que bon même. Oh, that, was, that was quiet. I know we can't make too much noise, but you know, what have we just been saying? We've got a good God. We've got a God who is above all others. A God who is amazing. A God who's got our interests at heart. We've got a God who just wants to love us more and more. You know, I love the fact we've got the cross behind us. Heaven before us. And Jesus all around us. Oh, I don't know about you. Are you ready for change? Now I notice some people shaking, not in their heads, not shaking them, not in their heads. Some people saying yes. But if change was to come, what would you be like? If Amen. change was... That's a good answer. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are still in the throes at the moment of certain restrictions. As Arlette said earlier on, you know, we are able to sing but there are so many ifs, ands, and buts at the moment. And we are working through that this moment in time. So just bear with us. We will be in touch with you to let you know. And when you start to sing, you've still got to wear the mask. You can't sing out loud. You know, all, all, all things that we don't like the idea of. But hang on a second. We still got God. Amen. Jesus is still with us. And we will get through this, you know. I know some people have been having difficulties over the pandemic simply because they're on their own, completely on their own. And they've been struggling. And yet people who are in family situations have also been struggling. But we get through it. Why? Because we've got the Lord on our side. He's with us. Today I just want to talk about one word, and that word is change. Now, I've been studying this for, oh, I don't know, the best part about three weeks, four weeks, I'm not sure now exactly. And I thought Friday night I had it all ready. I was prepared. Something happened last night. And this morning, we wait to see what happens. Because things have changed. The key word is still change, but things have changed since last, well, since last night. In my life, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I can say to you, I love Jesus. But more importantly, I'm glad that I can say that Jesus loves me. He doesn't give up on me. You know, in the, the past 16, 18 months, we've seen a few changes, haven't we, in the church? You know, we've seen things happening. You know, we, we've, we can't have those informal fellowship times after the service where we have a nice cup of tea or coffee, where we can chat to each other. We can be in a small cluster of people talking. We can't do that anymore at the moment. We can't, and this is the hard one, we can't hug each other. You know, I think that's, that's part of our, our faith is that, you know, just as Jesus would hug us, we want to hug someone else and just say, look, Jesus loves you, we love you. The singing has gone out of the window, the congregational singing, but that's on its way back in. These things called um, masks, anybody know what they are? Oh. I tell you what, I, I feel I feel protected wearing a mask, but I can't see a thing because my glasses steam up. You know, you know the problem, some of you. You know, I, I went to a shop yesterday and I put the mask on, and I was I was, I was feeling around the, the shelves because I couldn't see them properly. I was having to go, what's that saber there? But I tell you what, it doesn't matter. These things. They're all going to come to an end. The time will come when we won't have the restrictions we've got now. 
The time will come when things are going to get into the state of normality. Not necessarily the normal state that we had previously, but a new normality. And I, I just believe that God has got certain things happening. Now, I've made, a, I've got loads of notes here. I'll take one or two of them. I won't, I won't uh, bore you. I've only got a certain amount of time. Um, I started off by thinking about a man called Noah. You know, this, this man who, when things happened in his life, was rather old. When, when Noah was told by God to build that ark, he wasn't in his 30s or his 40s. He wasn't in his 60s or his 70s. He was 600 years old. And I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm 73, and I wouldn't like someone to tell me, go and build a boat, make it this size, do this, do that. I wouldn't have a clue. Noah started from scratch, built the boat. God told him exactly what to do. He did it. And that's the thing. It's what God told him to do. He did it. And sometimes God will tell us to do something. And we think that's going to change our lives completely. But unless we do it, we are disobeying God. Now Noah didn't disobey God. And we know that Noah, his wife, three sons and their wives, they got, got away with it. They, they, they survived the flood. But how different would it have been if Noah had said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't think of all this wood you want me to get, or all, these, all this stuff to make it waterproof. But Noah did what God commanded him. In um, the book of Exodus, we read the story of the Israelites. And you know something? What, what a story it is. Started off, Joseph being sold into slavery, being sent into Egypt. Then the famine comes along. Joseph's brothers hear about the fact they've got food in Egypt and they go along there. Eventually they're reunited with, with, with Joseph's brothers and his family. Then the problem starts in Egypt itself when the new Pharaoh comes along and, and says, these Israelites are getting too many for us. They're going to have to start, or we're going to have to start clamping down on them. The numbers were increasing. The people were getting stronger. And yet, Pharaoh said, no, we're not having this. They were made to work hard. They were in slavery. They were made to do things that were impossible. You know, build bricks without straw. I, I, I've never tried building a brick anyway, but, you know, I know I just go to the local building firm and buy some and that's it. And I'm just, well, <laughs> try and put them together. But, you know, the, the Israelites... They were getting accustomed to the slavery part, apart from the, the difficulties they faced. And then God said to Moses, I want you to go and speak to Pharaoh. No, well, not me. Not me. I can't speak to Pharaoh. And God said, I'll give you the words. And then God gave, Pharaoh, uh, God gave Moses Aaron to talk with him. And they went into Pharaoh and Spoke to him, told him what was happening. They wanted to be free. And you know Pharaoh's reaction each time. No. You're not going. And it was only after the, the plagues that came on the Israelites, on the Egyptians, and the final one where, whereas the Israelites were told to put blood around the lintels of the doorposts and, you know, the Lord would protect them on that night. It was only then that they were freed. But you know, when they were in the wilderness, it says that they were fed up. 
They were walking along. Oh, they were in the rooms for 40 years. And I know if I walk for 40 minutes, I'm fed up. Yeah, anybody else feel the same? I can see one with two faces going. You know. But when they were in the wilderness, they started asking questions to Moses. Why have you brought us out from Egypt? Wouldn't we have been better off there in slavery with food? And they kept on and on and on. And in the end, they lost out simply because they didn't want to follow what God had told them to do. So those people didn't get to the whole of the promised land. You know, God wouldn't let them in. It was like it's down to their descendants to actually get to the promised land. Their lives changed. Think about it. In the wilderness, they built the golden image to worship. These are people who were supposedly following God. But they did things that just weren't right. And God, God spoke to them. You know, they couldn't accept the changes. I want to ask you this morning, does that ring any bells? We've had to accept the changes of COVID, haven't we? The restrictions. We've had no choice. We've had to do it. If we don't, if we didn't do it, we could have had the council people come in, or the, the COVID police as they call them, and they could have shut us down completely. But you know, because we had instructions from Elin, we knew it was the right thing to do. We were following what our superiors were telling us. Well, when God speaks to us, we need to listen and obey. We need to do it. And sometimes it can mean changing our lives, changing the way we behave, changing the way we speak, changing the way that we do things. When I first thought about this, my thought was the Israelite family, the thousands of people, what they had been told, what they failed to do, and what happened to them. Let's go to the New Testament. There's a story in Mark 5 about a woman with a blood disease. Very well known story, Mark 5, and I'm looking at verse 25. She'd been struggling for 12 years with this blood disease, hemorrhaging. She had paid all of her money to the doctors to, to heal her, and they couldn't. So she was worse off. But then she heard about Jesus and said, If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Now, you might think, yeah, okay, we know the story, we know the ending. She didn't know the ending, but she knew the fact that if she touched his garment, she would be healed. And she went forward in that mentality. If I do this, I'm going to be healed. And we know the story, don't we, how she, she did it. She managed to get through the crowds, touched his garment. And it says in Mark 5.25, the moment she did it, and this is the end of the message, the flow of blood dried up. She could feel the change and knew her plague was over and done with. You see, she had to take that action through faith. And sometimes we've got to take action when God speaks to us through that faith. How many, how many times have you thought about doing something and you said, oh, no, a sec, no. I look silly if I do that. If I, if I go out on the streets and I start shouting out that Jesus is Lord, people are going to start looking at me and thinking, oh, no. And I'm like such a fool. 
But you know, I'm glad that we can look a fool for Jesus' sake. When we do things, it might not be the things we would normally do, but the things that he wants us to do, that's the right ones. Now that woman had a blood disease for 12 years. You know, online, if you're watching this now and you're thinking to yourself, well, I've had a problem for many years. But you know, Jesus is the answer. So those of us in the room, we might have difficulties we can't share with anyone for whatever reason. But Jesus is the answer. With Jesus, we can turn to him and know that he will hear our pleas, our cries, and he will respond. So if, if you're going through a difficult time at the moment, do what it says in the Bible. Cast all your cares on him and you will notice the change. Okay? In uh, Luke 5 verse 31, Jesus said these words, Who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? I'm here inviting outsiders, not insiders. Again, this is from the message. An invitation to a changed life. We wait for this. Changed inside and out. The life that Jesus gives us, whether we've been born again for many years, whether we're just new in the church or new, new to thinking about church, joining the church, it doesn't matter. When Jesus comes in, our lives are changed inside and outside. It's a radical change. Luke 8 verse 37. Jesus had just delivered a man from demons. Remember the story? The demons were sent into the pigs. The pigs went into the water. The pigs drowned. We know the people from the surrounding areas, they got together and they asked Jesus to leave. Why? Too much change. Too fast. And they were scared. I'm going to say one thing. Are you scared of change this morning? You know, whether you're in the room here with me or whether you're online, are you scared of change? Because we don't know yet what it's going to be like after the pandemic is over, do we? Do we go back to the year 20, 2019 where we had no pandemic? Do we go back to that period where things were entirely different in the church? Or will we find the church itself will be different? Who knows? But are we afraid of change? You know, it's only Jesus who can change our lives, isn't it? We can do so much. But at the end of the day, it's Jesus who does the work within us. I'm, I'm exercising at the moment. I'm trying to lose a bit of weight. All right? I've got an exercise bike in the house. And I can do a half hour on an exercise bike and I can, I can clock up 13, 13 and a half miles an hour. I can do such a distance. Or I can sit in the settee and look at the bike and think, hmm, it's a nice looking bike. But how good is it? What use is it? Unless I get on that bike and start pedaling, or unless I get my shoes on and start walking, unless I start getting my bathers on and go swimming, it's nice to sit down and think about exercise. But the more you think about exercise, the more you realize that you get more uh, weight coming on. You get less healthy. I noticed this last week, you know, I couldn't go on my bike for five days, I think it was. And when I went on the next time, 
My legs were killing me. You know, even a little bit of exercise does you good. We were playing a game with our grandchildren yesterday. And that's all it entailed was we were, we were holding a, a, some, some cord and we were just going back and forth like this. They were one end, I was the other end. And I tell you what, after a while, my arms were aching like mud. I could have left that game in a packet. But my arms would have been like this, folded up, not doing anything, no exercise, no change. But you know something? When you do some exercise, you feel that much better. Things change. When we spend time talking with God, things change. When we spend time reading his word, things change. When we spend time, as that first song, the, the, that verse in Zechariah we read earlier on, Lord, send the rain, we change. I know that there's a weather warning in place, lunchtime today until seven o'clock tomorrow morning. The only thing that's change is that I'm a wet hair. I'm going to be running back, back to the house probably just to try and stay a bit dry. But you know, Lord, send the rain. Let the floods come with the, with the rain of the Holy Spirit. We, we don't want to see change for the sake of change. We want to see change because God has anointed it. We want to see change because it's in God's plan. God's plan isn't for this church to accommodate 20 odd people. God's plan isn't for this church just to be for us, most of all who live outside Trothland. God's plan is for this place to be filled with people from this area. God's plan is for churches everywhere to be filled with people from the immediate area they're in. But it means change. Whatever that change entails, are we ready for it? Are we willing to go through with it? Now you know that there are some things that we will see change. There are some things that will never change. Number one, the cross. Number two, the fact that Jesus died on the cross. That, that will never change. That's a fact. It's his story. And that's just one thing. But you know, when I was reading through the word, Romans 8 came to my mind. It says this, In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, and this is where I'm going to commit the, the gravest sin of all, I'm going to add something in my ear, nor any virus shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's never, that, that's never going to change, that love. It's there, it's with us right now. In the same chapter, verse 11, Romans 8, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit dwelling in you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will never change. Our perception of him might change, but he will never change. His power is forever. The blood of Jesus. What does it say in Isaiah? You know, it's by his stripes we are healed. By his wounds we are healed. That will never change. 
We might be thinking, uh, come on, I've been praying for healing for so and so for a long time, and nothing's happened. Keep at it. Don't give up. This woman, she she carried on for 12 long years trying to get healing. But you know, she kept at it. She persevered and finally realized that Jesus was the answer. So if you've been praying for healing and you've had nothing, or if you've prayed for somebody else and you haven't seen any results, don't give up. Keep on praying for them. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's a song which says, Jesus never fails. Jesus will never change. Jesus, he is the one who keeps us together. And in this one final verse, I've always been afraid of change. You know, it's it's like going into a dark room where you don't know where, where the light switch is, you don't know where this is, you don't know where that is. But sometimes, God gives us change for a purpose. And, you know, we've just got to take hold of it. Now, I must be honest, I go to our bathroom in a, in a dark night and I, I cheat a bit because I know that there's a cord hanging down and I can feel around for that cord until I find it and I can pull it and the light comes on. You know, we can pull the cords that God dangles before us. We can actually touch the Holy Spirit. We can ask the Holy Spirit for strength, for guidance, for help as we come to change. But there's this one verse. We said about the cross, the blood. We said about the Holy Spirit. We said about Jesus. Malachi 3 6. I am the Lord. I change not. Hallelujah. I am the Lord. I change not. No matter what we're going through, He is the Lord. No matter what our difficulties, He is the Lord. No matter what we might need, He is the Lord. And He is ready to meet our needs. Don't be afraid of change. If it's change from God, that's fine. That's brilliant. If somebody, tell, somebody else tells you, look, I think you ought to do this, and you, you question it, that's fine. But when God tells you something, just do it. Respond. Allow him to change you. You know, I've, I've known Jesus since I was a baby, I suppose. But it was 1967 when I finally accepted Jesus into my life. And in that time, since, since then, things have changed completely in my life. I didn't have a clue about reading the Bible. Although I was brought up in a Christian household, I, I struggled with it. I struggled with prayer. And to be honest, there are times when I still do. But I'm thankful to God that He's with us. So if you get a problem and you don't know what to do, go to God. Let Him change things for you. Just be prepared. When change comes, let's go with it. And let's just give God all the glory. Amen. I'm just going to leave it at that. Let's just pray and then I'm going to ask Andrew just to uh, play the last song for us. But Father, right now, we thank you, Lord, that you are the God who does not change, but you change us. And thank you, Lord, that we can just be so aware of your guidance, so aware of your leading. Help us, Jesus, to respond to everything you do for us, to everything you say to us. Just as Noah 
did all that you had commanded him to do. Just as Moses and Aaron did what you had commanded them to do. Lord, I pray that you would help us to do what you tell us to do. So I just say thank you, Lord, for this time we've had together this morning. Lord, whether we're in the room or whether online, I just pray that you would help us to know the changing power of the Holy Spirit and to just become a new part of your church. So be with us right now, Lord, for the rest of this day and for the coming week, that we will glorify your name. Lord, we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen.